Everybody, I'll, uh, I'll get started. I'm going to be talking about uh, Groovy and data science. So before we get started, I'll just uh, briefly talk. This is designed to be a workshop. The entire workshop is uh, actually on the um, on the web on a GitHub repo. So um, if I um, let me let me share uh, an alternative, I'll come back to my slide deck in a minute. Um, let me show you a few things that you can go and uh, look at outside this workshop if you um, if you fall behind on any any sessions, um, you'll be able to go and uh, find everything that you need. Um, let me just get one more. Are you drop. So if if you um, fall behind on the the slide deck, um, all the slides are uh, available on uh, speaker deck. They're also on a um, there's a Google Drive that uh, Apache Con is collecting all the slides on. So um, if if they make it available, it'll also be there. The recordings will be on a YouTube channel, so you'll be able to come back later for any bits that you missed. And um, there's also a reap. Uh, so so this is the um, uh, speaker deck. So the the whole session of slides that we're going to go through are on here. You can you can come back and um, look at those at a later date if there's any any sessions in particular that you're interested in. And the whole workshop is um, uh, based on all of the code that's in a GitHub repo. So the one that's in here, the the uh, links to so both of those are on the second slide of, of um, the, the slides that are there. If you if you search for Paul King Groovy Data Science, you'll you'll easily find uh, both the repo and the slide deck. I imagine. Um, so 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 you can always come back and have a look at it. This repo site is where all the um, the, the code is. So there's code in here for all different uh, parts of of the workshop. We 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 don't do. There's enough material here for two days worth of workshop. We're planning to do about three or four hours of material out of here. So it'll just be select pieces. Some of the more advanced things that like running Apache Spark, running Apache Ignite, all the code for that is here. I'll briefly show you a couple of slides on that, but it it'll it really takes uh, too long to fit into the the uh, the format that we have here for ApacheCon. So there'll be a lot of material here. I'm going to split it up into, into chunks. So we'll do a little bit of intro stuff, and then I'm just going to pick a topic. So I'll just... This house prices example is all about regression. Um, there's some whiskey examples, which I'm, I'm potentially looking forward to the the whiskey boff that's uh, going to be organised later on for us for attendees and speakers to chat to one another. Apparently, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, how you might classify different uh, different whiskey whiskey brands. So we'll, we'll look at different examples. We'll look at some deep learning stuff again, very briefly on 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 that particular topic, and just a couple of other topics. Uh, if we get time, we'll we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll just glance at. So I'll just go through the intro first, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll be uh, looking at at those topics. Now, um, for uh, going back to the to, to the homepage of that repo, if you um, so you, you can go and do a git clone of this repo, get all the code on your machines if you wanted to, install Java, and then you'll be able to run Gradle W and run, uh, and compile and run any of the examples that are in there. There's sort of instructions in, in some of the files if you're familiar with uh, using build technologies like Gradle. If you're familiar with Java or Groovy, you'll, you'll be able to do that. And I'll walk through people, uh, help, help walk through some of that um, for, for our session today. The other thing that you can do is not do any any installation at all and come down and so this is the, the uh, regression example here. There's a little bit of an intro about it. It tells you about all the code and things that are, that are around, but you can actually just launch and I'll do this now. It, it actually, um, 
it takes because we're using just a a, uh, a, a free public uh, uh, binder hub technology to 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 do all of these things. It takes a long time to load it, and eventually it'll load you a page that looks like like this one. And um, by the time that swirling uh, finishes, you'll be able to run all of the examples live on the web, and you'll be able to just click into any of these and just re re-edit the groovy code that's in all of these cells here and then just hit enter or hit hit the little there'll be little um once it's finished loading there'll be a little menu that says run a cell and so on if you if you're familiar if you've ever used uh, notebooks you should be familiar with that but i'll once this is loaded I'll, I'll i'll give a demo of that a bit later on so there's some um some that's just a little bit of background um you can be uh so there we go we've, we've loaded now and then it would go and um, start running the individual cells. And I can go and ask it to go and I can click on a cell, edit it, and then go and uh, run an individual cell and so on. So you can go and do all that. There's one of those uh, note notebooks, BickerX. So it's like a Jupyter notebook, if you've heard of that. It's a BickerX variant, which is one that runs JVM technologies, including Groovy. And there's one of those for each of the uh, main examples. So you can come down and run whichever one of those you're interested in. So if you're finding it's very slow, some of these, some of them are much smaller than other ones. So you, you might try running one of um, this. There's a natural language processing example here. You might try running that one. I wouldn't necessarily recommend trying running all of them at once. It might uh, end up being quite slow for you, but um, you should be able to uh, play around with that. So you should do it. You can do everything just through that page and not have to install anything. But but bear with us, especially when there's a large number of us all trying to, to use this stuff. Um, it, it might take a little while to for, you, for things to uh, pop up on your browser. Okay, so I'll um, stop sharing that one and go back to the slides. And uh, we'll get started. Okay, everyone happy so far? No one's got questions or anything. So what I'm going to do, there's some people who have lined up to um, on the moderation panel to jo join. I'm just going to uh, dismiss those for now. Um, if you've got any questions and you want to ask a video question, then uh, please request to, 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 to uh, join back and, and you, I can share your video on the screen and you'll be able to ask questions. So if you want to ask a video question, you can... Uh, click that button to request, or you can just type it into chat either way. And every now and then I'll, I'll pause to see what uh, what's in the chat window. Okay, so uh, let's get started. My name's uh, Paul King. I do a whole lot of stuff in the Groovy space, and I've done a whole lot of stuff in many, many uh, areas throughout my career, formal methods, agile, uh, lots of, lots of uh, my my career has been various roles and positions uh, often related to the uh, the JVM uh, technology. So that's sort of been a common theme for much of the stuff they do, but I've been involved in research, uh, management, and technology for uh, all different things in, uh, in uh, different phases. Written a book called Groovy in Action. If you're wanting to dive in, do a deep dive into Groovy, you won't find uh, any better uh, reference. That'll take you won't take you to the very latest versions. Groovy four was released uh, yesterday. It um, is is now everywhere except for Maven Central. We've we've changed our Maven coordinates, and there is um, just one little glitch that we're waiting on human involvement to to move something, but. Um, you'll be able to go and play with Groovy 4 as well if you're interested in doing that. Uh, Groovy 306, which was also released a, couple, uh, a day or two ago, is the, what the the repo that uh, is it, it's um, using that version of Groovy. So you'll be using the latest um, stable version of Groovy in, in, a, in those examples if you uh, download that repo or you're, or you're browsing through the code. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about Groovy in Data Science. The Groovy Project, we're very keen for people to come and, and chat and uh, get involved in the community or just ask us about Groovy. So, so come and ask us about um, anything in the, via the mailing lists or forums. 
while you're there, have a look at the other 350-odd projects that are, are in, in Apache. And we are very, very keen if you want to come and help help us out in the project, that would be great. There's also a Friends of a Gro Apache Groovy uh, Open Collective if you um, want to give uh, some of the people in the community a little bit of financial assistance. So um, check that out too if, if that's uh, something that can, you can um, interest you. Okay, so just a couple of slides on Groovy. I don't want to spend uh, too long sort of giving you a sales pitch on, on it. It's a, it's a technology. Some of us can be very productive in it. Some of us really love it, but it's, um, it'll be up to you to dive in. You can assess it and see if you like it. And um, I'll just tell you what the, the good, and, good and bad things about it are, and you can decide if it's going to assist you. There's, there's lots of people who can um, use Groovy and, and become very, very productive. It's, it's sort of becomes um, a little bit addictive using some of the, the, the groovy language in, in, uh, instead of alternatives in, in some places. So Groovy's syntax is, is very, very much uh, imp impacted and uh, designed to be very, very like Java. So it's designed to be like Java. So a Java developer would feel very familiar with it, but it's uh, designed to be simpler in many, many uh, scenarios, and it's designed to have enhanced productivity features. It has both a static and a dynamic nature. So Java is a statically typed language, and something like Ruby or Python is a dynamic language. And uh, Groovy spans both those worlds. It lets you do either one or the other. So it, it, it originally came about to offer some of the features that are in dynamic languages like Ruby and Python to Java programmers. So it only had a dynamic nature. And the, the original goal was if you needed dynamic stuff, you'd do it in Groovy. If you needed static stuff, you'd do it in Java. But these days you can do uh, either, either nature, uh, in, both in Groovy if you want, but you can also use Java for any bits that, that you want as well and, and Groovy meshes in really, really nicely if you if you have a sort of a mixed language project. Now, another really key thing about Groovy is it's extensible. So every time the Groovy developers have needed a feature in the language, they've sort of, oh, what's the, I've thought to themselves, what's the best way we could add that feature without doing lots and lots of work? Wouldn't it be great if there was a way to make the la make adding things to the language easy? And they said, yes, there, it would be good if we had that. Let's add that to the language. And then, hey, let's allow users, not just us, the language designers, but users of the language to have the same feature. So if there's a, if there's a thing that we're using to add bells and whistles to, to Groovy to make it, make it better, give it some of its productivity features, you can also use those features. And so you'll, that'll be a recurring theme that... Um, will pop up every now and now and then. Okay, so the idea is it's meant to be, if you're a Java developer, so you're a hardcore Java developer, you should be able to learn Groovy really, really easily. But at the same time, if you're someone who's not a hardcore Java developer, it should still be a simple language to learn. So, so that's sort of the uh, goal that Groovy's trying to uh, um, achieve, to make it simple. Um, the other thing is that the, impedance mismatch between Java and Groovy is smaller than in any of the other alternative JVM platform languages. So when, you, when you're coding in Groovy, you're very, very close to the same as coding in, in Java. So the mental model that you'd have as a programmer will be the same. The classes that you'll be using a lot of the time will be the same. They might have, they might appear like they're different. They might appear like they've got enhancements but it's often the exact same classes. And you can uh, mix and match between the languages. So I can have a Java class extend from a Groovy class, which might implement a Java interface. And so you can mix and match between the two languages. Now, um, here's just, uh, again, don't worry about all the, the amount of uh, code that's on that slide. I'm not, ask, I'm not gonna give you a quiz asking you what each line does, but the code on the left is, it's uh, probably 10 year old vintage code now, but it's it's typically Java 1.4, 1.5 sort of vintage code that you might use for manipulating a list. And if you save that in a Java file, you can compile it with the Java compiler and then run it. And it'll print out some information about those lists. 
if you just rename it to dot groovy instead of dot java and use the groovy compiler it'll run exact in exactly the same way and with the same output but you can alternatively shrink down some of the uh, boilerplate code that's in there and use the the equivalent variant that's on the right if you want so that's uh, a way to simplify the code on the left using some of Gro groovy's productivity features so it becomes a lot simpler and a lot easier to read a lot easier to maintain and you don't even need to stop there groovy's got support for what it calls domain specific languages so it's got a feature called command chains and, and a few other little bells and whistles that make it um, easy to make code that doesn't even look like code. So that looks like I've got a text file with, with some string sentences in there. That is actually code and it can be, actually be statically typed uh, code. It can actually be code that won't compile if it f runs a spell checker and any of the words in that file don't pass the spell checker. So there's lots of uh, advanced features that you can use in Groovy and hide them away. So in that particular case, if I was doing very advanced uh, spell checking or something like that, it, it would be statically typing, a static, statically typed feature that it would be hidden behind the scenes that I'd have to go turn on and it would do those kind of checks if I wanted it to. I'd, I'd have to that's not a built-in feature. That's something that I would need to go turn on. But it, that kind of thing can be done is the, is the story. The code, um, one of the things that's common in the Java world is design patterns. And design patterns are a way to uh, code classes or algorithms in a way that has uh, characteristics that, we, that are deemed to be good. So one of the things you might do is create an immutable class and you might uh, create that such that you could use it in a multi-threaded environment or you might just w be wanting to make it easier to reason about because you know once that uh, immutable data structure is set up it'll never be changed and there are rules in the that java developers learn uh, to, to make such objects and there's a, there's a whole list of them you can go and uh, read uh, books just blocks uh, effective java would be a good one to go read and it'll tell you about uh, for, for such immutable objects, you need getters and no setters. You'll need uh, defensive copy in, defensive copy out, and et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on for the rules that you should put in place. Groovy tries to make that much easier, and you would just type add immutable class person, the code down the bottom, and you will get a pre-baked version that follows all of the rules that you're supposed to follow. So Groovy tries to make you lay to be more productive, tries to make the code uh, simpler, and it, it often encapsulates a lot of these design patterns in uh, simple sort of like library uh, calls or li library patterns in the language. And our oh, mouse wasn't in the thing. Uh, and I said the language was very extensible. So the code there on the left is just some code out of Apache Commons Math for doing some matrix manipulation. So uh, it's creating a couple of matrices, then it's going to multiply them together, and then it's going to find the inverse of a matrix, and then do uh, multiply, and then uh, multiply and add scalars to the the uh, terms within the matrices, and then uh, square a mat uh, square the matrix. This is why I should have a red blue uh, the picture of with the red red pill and the blue pill with the, my matrix uh, link there, but I, I obviously missed that chance, haven't I? I'll have to do that for next time. So that's the code you would use in Java. Uh, you can write the same code in Groovy with the code that's on the right. So up the top is the, the same code, and when you run that, the exact same method calls and libraries that are on the left hand side will get called. And when the result comes back, the um, and, th and that's because Groovy is extensible and we can go and add things like matrix multiplication and so on as things that are supported. So it's not supported out of the box, but I can go and add matrix multiplication to the language. So it's actually some of the some of the things are, are supported out of the box. Multiplying matrices together does work out of the box, but some some of the things I had to go and add a tiny little bit of um syntactic sugar a little what's called a little mini dsl which allows me then 
to, and again, it can be hidden away, allows me to write what's on the right-hand side. That's because the language is extensible, but the tools are also extensible as well. And the Groovy console, which I'm using there to write that in, it's just a little uh, application that pops up and I can type in code and run, run stuff. Um, it's extensible as well. And I can tell it how to display a matrix. And it's using a little swing bit of code, a swing code that has nice round brackets you can see there. And it puts the matrix in, in its um, sort of uh, rows and columns as appropriate for the size of the matrix. So that's um, showing that the tools are, are often extensible as well. And it's very, very easy to go and use uh, tools that are uh, out in, in Maven repositories or whatever. There's a, there's a grab uh, annotation that you can add to your code and it effectively goes and loads classes out of uh, Maven repos and puts them in your class path. So this is really, really handy. If you don't want to have to go and uh, set up lots of complex uh, IDEs and class paths and things, um, you want things to be very simple, you can just add these things into the code and it just runs. And people can just cut and paste that code and run it in their, their Groovy console. And all the things that they need then for the code to work will just be downloaded automatically and it'll run. There's another other nice little feature that I'll just mention, uh, Groovy's asserts. So, this is something that testers often find very, very handy because when it, when uh, code stops work and, and developers find it handy too, uh, when code stops working, you often don't know oh, which bit broke. I'm not sure what's going on here. Now, in this case here, I've intentionally, I've, I've taken um, some French looking uh, text and some uh, Danish looking text and I've said, I predict that the language that a natural language process detector will uh, predict for both those languages is the same. And that might have been a, very, a poor thing to say. And in fact, it's, it's false. And when I try to run that code, it'll download all the, the natural language processing library automatically for me. It'll run the detection uh, mechanism for me and it'll, it'll tell me, ah, they're not the same. And in fact, one of them looks like it's French. The FAR, Fra uh, France is, the, is the, uh, the language key that's come back from the language detector. And the other ones come back DAN for, for, for Danish there. So it's welcome to Paris and welcome to Copenhagen is what, what the uh, the things that have been compared and, they're, and they've, it's detected that they're different languages. There's a groovy REPL. If, you've, uh, if you use the, the Java REPL, there's um, an, an equivalent one, one there. I'm gonna show you when we get to the regression example, uh, using that in combination with um, some, some of the data science libraries. Okay, so um, tiny bit more, not that it's important here, but uh, when I mentioned DSLs before, here's just a couple more examples just to sort of show you why, why Groovy is often seen as a, it's a way to allow people to write what looks like very, very simple code. So th that looks like I've got a text file, cranes have two legs, tortoises have four legs, but in fact that's code and it can be statically typed check code and I can just I can cut and paste that into the console and run it if I've set my console up to have the uh, knowledge about my DSL, which is is relatively easy to do. And I can just add in another line. So that one there says this is the old. Uh, there's a, a problem that you may have been given as as a school child. The uh, animals and legs. So I've got uh, seven animals with twenty legs, and how many of them are cranes, which have two legs, and how many are tortoises, which have four legs. And that's a problem that you can deduce just by plugging in the numbers. So there's four cranes and three tortoises. If I just add another line of code, millipedes have a thousand legs and they're now, there are now a thousand and twenty legs. It, the uh, the code runs and it displays the new, the new answer. So that's using a constraint programming library behind the covers, and it can in fact be uh, strongly typed, and it may it can not compile if I used animals that aren't known animals out of an animal database or something like that. Or if I say that tortoises have three legs or something, it can go and check that in a database and not compile it because it uh, deems it to be invalid. And that could all be hidden. So I, it, to wh whoever's the, the person who's writing the code here, which might be a business analyst, it might be a tester, it might be an end user customer, or it could, could be the developer, 
um, they can write what looks like very simple code and a lot of smart stuff can happen behind the scenes. And, that, and that, that's um, not directly related to data science, but it comes in very, very handy uh, in many scenarios in data science as well. There's a whole bunch of tools. So there's web consoles. We'll be looking at the Beaker um, example. That's That's got Groovy inside it. Some of the other tools I'm going to show you have, have got Groovy uh, add-ons of various kinds. And uh, there's ID support, IntelliJ, Eclipse. Um, that it, I'll show you some examples of stuff running in IntelliJ uh, later on. There's uh, good Groovy support in uh, most, most of those IDs these days. And build tools as well. There's an Apache technology called Ant. There's an Apache technology called Maven. There's another build technology that's uh, got a Groovy DSL called Gradle. And you can use those to build uh, complex systems and they can compile your code up, run test suites and things like that. There's um, Groovy support for all that sort of stuff. And the Groovy's got a very, very large uh, ecosystem of, of, of many, many tools. Um, there's tools to do uh, web uh, web applications. So there's Grails. There's tools for doing concurrency. There's Jeepers. Gradle, I mentioned, is for a build tools. And uh, we're going to look at BeakerX. There's Jenkins pipelines and things that you that you, you may use for doing CI. Uh, Micronaut, the, uh, the T-shirt here is for, for building microservices. And there's been a few sessions on that uh, yesterday. And, and Grails as well. Um, Spock is a testing framework that uh, allows you to write uh, tests in, in a very, very productive way. And, and the list goes on. Uh, Jeb was, was a, a talk on that uh, yesterday as well. So there's lots of uh, technologies in the ecosystem that uh, will be useful to you if you, if you, if you dive in. I'm going to mention um, more stuff related to data science a bit later on, but just, to, just so you know, there's there's a big community of other people who are uh, invested in Groovy and doing lots of stuff. Okay, now just briefly on data science, we're, we're just going to whiz through a list of uh, a bunch of different tools. I'm not going to mention all the tools that I know about, but I'm just going to mention uh, um, as I go through each sort of category, I'll, I'll mention tools that are often useful in that for that class of uh, problem, different parts of uh, the whole data science process, uh, what what tools that I know about that I think are some of the more common tools and more useful tools. And I'll just briefly mention some of those and we'll be coming back to using some of those when we get to the the, the different uh, examples. So uh, the data science process, what's it all about? Um, so I've, I dabble in data science. I'm not a full-time data scientist by any means. So if some of you are data scientists out there, you'll know all of this much better than me. So I'm just giving you the the, uh, the brief intro, uh, just enough knowledge here so that you understand what I'm what I'm talking about for for the rest of the uh, the talk. So the data science process is there's going to be a number of different steps that you need to to do, and we don't want to just focus on a very small segments of that if you when you if, if you're going to pick a coding language to you want something that's going to support all of the different uh, parts of that that uh, phases so you're going to be obtaining your data that might come from lots of different sources you need to potentially manipulate that data there might be um, holes in the data there might be things that uh, need cleansing or fixing up or uh, just just need manipulation of some kind there's Data exploration. So you've got all this data, and you're trying to make head or tail of what it's uh, what it actually means. And so you'll want to ex explore it, uh, look at look at uh, the the values that are there. Maybe do uh, various calculations on bits and pieces of it to to, to work things out. Uh, um, you might want to visualize things even at the, even at that exploration phase. And then you're going to uh, probably come up with data models that you want to use. The, the whole reason you're doing your data science is to come up with a model that you're going to use for a particular purpose. So that'll be the next step. And visualization will, will come back into play. Once you're actually using your models, you'll want to visualize the results of using those models as well. And then that'll be a cyclic process. Once you have some, you've gone through that cycle, you, you learn more about the particular domain that you're, you're in. And that might inspire you to go and find more data and uh, find more 
models in your data and explore it a bit more and so on. And you'll go around in circles and, and build things up. So what do you want to have is a toolkit of stuff that's going to make doing all of those steps uh, as easy as possible. And Groovy is a, a good glue language for all of those different things. So when I said before, it originally was a dynamic companion to Java. So Java was going to be the stuff that you did uh, in its uh, initially, the, the, the thought was Java would be you do all your hardcore coding in Java and Groovy would be all the rest of the stuff. One of the things that was in the rest of the stuff was scripting. And so if you're looking for files or sc scraping stuff off websites or talking to a database or d doing all those sorts of things that you, you might want to do with a shell scripting language or something, uh, Groovy would have good support for all of those. It's, and it still does to this day. Even though people, um, it's not a folk, it's not as big a focus as as it once was because Groovy's expanded into lots of other areas since, since those early days. Okay, so across all of those uh, parts of the life cycle, you need a bunch of different libraries for doing the different things that are there. If you go and look in, uh, go and search for for data science libraries. You'll find lots of stuff in for Python, some for stuff for Scala, some for stuff for R, and so on. Um, you won't see huge amounts of stuff for Groovy, but you'll soon see when I get through the rest of the talk that, in fact, um, there is quite a lot of stuff there for Java, and all of that is suitable, and even some of the Scala stuff is um, that can be readily available, uh, re readily used through uh, through Groovy. So the the uh, Spark examples that we'll do, the, the, there's some Scala technology that's used in the back end of those that uh, you don't see any of that when you're using it from Groovy. Um, but uh, all of that uh, technology will, will be there. So when, when we go to the um, Java world, there's not as as much as um, Python, say, for doing all the different things, but there is still a large number of libraries that you have available to you. There's a whole bunch of libraries for machine learning, for visualization, all kinds of maths and stats and engineering and, and so on, and various kinds of analysis and data manipulation and so on. So there's a, there's a bunch of stuff there. We're going to whiz through uh, all those different things and uh, have a look at uh, some of the useful stuff. So the first thing you might want to do is grab your data and you want to get it from different places. You want to look at it. it might Some stuff might be text. Some stuff might be uh, formatted, structured, unstructured, databases, all sorts of things. There's a whole bunch of tools that, that are available to you. So built into Groovy, there's things for doing working with JSON, with XML, with databases, there's some little code samples off on the right hand side. There, don't worry too much about the the um, the code that's inside there. It's not important to understand the different lines of code there. It's just showing you that it's really easy to go and uh, digest JSON, you know, manipulate XML, read and write to databases. It's a very small number of lines of code compared to what it might be in other languages. So Groovy's specifically gone and made all of those sorts of tasks really, really easy. And if you're wanting to do, maybe you've got a, uh, some of your data might be embedded in other places, in spreadsheets, in other kinds of documents, then there's a Apache Tika, Apache Poi, and uh, other libraries that you can go use and, and uh, get all that sort of data. So there's lots of things available. If, if you've uh, wanting to explore in any of these areas and, you, and you're, wanting to do a specific thing, just uh, ask me a question and I'll try, I'll, I'll uh, tell you about anything that I know about. Okay, so um, when you've got data, you need to put it into some sort of form that you can then run with your algorithms or work with. And Java's got lists and maps and sets and you know, so dictionaries, things like that, all built into it. And Groovy lets you use all of those and makes it easier to use all of those and has some nicer uh, add-ons as well built into it to make it uh, a lot, lot simpler. So it actually makes pulling stuff out of, you know, it might be nested stuff inside XML or JSON or in databases. Uh, it's got expressions, a, a thing called GPath expressions, Groovy path expressions and things that make getting information from all these different kinds of sources all look very similar and all look very familiar. So it's got capabilities to do all that. And there's lots of other libraries that do with collections. But most people in the data science world go the next step and use uh, data science specific 
uh, collections uh, libraries. And so that often you might hear, hear the term data frames or something like that. So they're just like a collection, but they're a little bit more advanced. They will know things like, well, what's the column names of my collection? Rather than just being a list of numbers, I might have a, you know, in, in straight Java, I might be using a, an array of doubles or a list of strings or a map between string and doubles. But data frames embed a tiny bit more information, like you know, column names and uh, a little bit more information that makes them uh, very, very easy to start uh, manipulating in, in various ways. And uh, table saw is, and smile are going to be, so smile I think is now incorporating something similar. And spark data frames is part of one of the, our examples. There's some of the um, libraries that uh, I'd recommend using for doing that. And it's, it's worth, Often, if you're doing something very, very simple, and we'll see this in my, in the early examples when we get to regression, you don't even need need to go to data frames. Um, but the if you're wanting to do a little bit more advanced stuff, it's it's worthwhile going to those data frames, and they will have special commands for uh, helping you work with things. You know, let's get rid of this column, or let's clean uh, this kind of data and scrub this sort of stuff, and so on. The data frames will, will have some um, more functionality that is quite useful, so we'll, we'll 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 be seeing some of those when we get to get to um, get to that part of the the examples. Um, what about exploration? So I'm going to show you a um, a myriad of different things for exploration, and we're going to be exploring using uh, some visualization libraries. We're going to be exploring using the notebook capabilities. Um, and that we'll use those to draw graphs and draw tables and things like that. But there's a lot of other options that are available to you. One of the ones that I'll point you to, it's, it's not really Groovy specific, but it's a thing called uh, DEX, Data Explorer. It's a little bit clunky. It's, um, now this will be doing an injustice to both JMeter and EnderDEX. But you can think of it, for anyone who knows Apache JMeter, there might be some in the audience. Um, you can think of it as the sort of Apache JMeter for doing data exploration. So it lets you go and uh, without typing any uh, code, it lets you go and uh, go and find your data sources and it sort of puts them into data frames that it knows about for you and then it'll let you visualize stuff. Um, it's a bit clunky, but um, you, it's, you might want to go grab it and it's got some nice graphs. So the graph down the bottom middle is sort of, you can get a, a table of data and you can and one of your columns might be the country. You can say, give me a 3D world map of that, uh, my data, please. And it'll draw up these things. So um, the one on the right is a, sort of a, a three dimensional graph. And it, so it's got, it's super simple to go and get those sorts of visualization effects uh, happening for your data. If you, see the screenshot that's sort of uh, on the right up the top of, of that uh, slide. One of the things you will be in really, really small font is under programming, it lets you do Groovy scripts. So that tool's got not much to do with Groovy necessarily, but it lets you dive out to Groovy to do bits and pieces of your manipulation. So you can go and use it to hand pull in whole bunch of uh, information, then you might use a Groovy script to clean it or to re re uh, rework it in some way. And then you might go and use their, again, without coding, use their visualization uh, options and so on. So that's the sort of thing you can do. Another one that is really worth your while to go and have a look at is a thing called Weka. And we're going to use Weka. Uh, well, it'll be available in the repo. Um, it's not on the uh, the Beaker notebooks, but in the GitHub repo, there's a Weaker example. So you can actually go and play with this and actually use Weaker as a library. So Weaker's a library of data science algorithms. So it's got regression and classification and a bunch of other stuff built in. But it also has this uh, GUI front end that lets you not do any coding if you don't want to for many, many tasks. And so you can go and grab Weaker and fire it up, and then you can go and pull in data, and it's got its uh, certain formats that it supports, um, which are widely supported. 
and it'll do a whole you'll be able to do a whole lot of things right from within that environment and i'll show you some uh, a few more examples of using weaker later on but one of the other nice things that it's got is you can just dive down under tools and pop up a groovy console which is the the thing that's on the right hand side there that's popped open inside weaker and it lets me type in uh, groovy code there and that groovy code has direct access to the data that Weka knows about. So Weka supplies it with the data, Groovy can manipulate it all, and then Weka can then go on and do other things. And here we've, we're actually doing plots from Groovy uh, on the data that we're manipulating in that particular example. And there are just a large number of libraries for, for doing uh, visualization plots of various sorts of kinds. Some of them are not as easy as other ones to, to use. Some are super simple to use, and we're going to be uh, doing some of, of that form, and we'll show you those. Uh, other ones are a little bit more complex to, to, to use and a little bit more fiddly, uh, but there's just a whole range of options. You can, you can go and find one that'll meet your needs. We're going to be using the BeakerX notebook uh, technology. So you, you, in, with that uh, paradigm, if you've never used it before, it's sort of like a literate programming style. And if you don't know what literate programming is, it's just imagine you're writing a book rather than pro programs or writing an, an Excel spreadsheet rather than programs. But inside, inside that book or inside that spreadsheet, there'll be some bits that are code, quite simple code often, and other bits that can be the result of running that code. And uh, in this example here, we've got a little bit of code that does a, a bar chart on the left. And then we've got a little bit of code that does a, a drunken sailor walk uh, plot on the right. And you, you type in your code, you ask it to, 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 to run the cells that are relevant and it'll go and pr uh, produce the output and display it all inside your browser. So that's sort of the notebook paradigm. And that's, that's one of the things that I'm suggesting you go and do. Uh, if you don't want to do any setting up of IDEs and so on, we we'll get to the labs. But the lab, the repo is there for anyone who wants to do it in their ID as well. You can go either way. You probably won't have time to do both, so pick one and uh, stick with it. If you join late, I'd recommend you just do the notebook variant. Um, but but they're both there, and when we get to question time, I'll, I'll assist anyone getting either working. Now. Uh, the BeakerX one that uh, I just showed you is only one of several. There's a, Apache's got their own called Zeppelin, which um, I've found a little bit clunky, but it's uh, it might be getting there in recent versions that I've I've used. There's one called Groovy Lab that um, seems to stagnate and then come out with a, it comes out with a new version which is looks really good and then stagnates again for a bit. So we'll we'll see how that goes. And there's there's a bunch of other ones as well. I'm only going to look at BeakerX. Um, even BeakerX is a bit clunky at times. Uh, the the it, evolution of, of that framework is a bit sporadic, and sometimes certain releases seem a bit more flaky than others to me. The uh, but but um, it's certainly from from my point of view, it's the one with the the most promise at the moment. But we'll wait and see how things go. Some of the other ones might catch up. Okay. Uh, data preparation. Oh, so just to just to just to pause a little bit, I'll, I'll have a uh, five minute break when I get to the end of this intro session, which is in about another ten slides time, and then um, I'll have a five minute break, and then we'll start on our first uh, topic, which will be uh, regression. So that's sort of the format of how we'll do things. Uh, data preparation. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff in Java for working with files. Groovy enhances that. And then there's a bunch of other libraries that you can also be uh, using. If you were at the talks uh, yesterday in the Groovy track, you would have seen a, uh, a talk on Jeb, which is a great uh, tool for testing uh, websites. It's also great for web scraping. So if you've got a website or a, a REST service that you need to pull some information out of and manipulate, put into a, into a data frame, uh, Jeb's going to make that easy for you. And over and above that, there are special uh, frameworks, there's Spring Batch, Apache Camel, Apache Goblin, which do various kinds of either batching or ETL extraction transformation, whatever the L is, I forget what the L is these days. Anyhow, I'm sure um, I'll, that'll spring back in my mind in a minute. Load, load, sorry. Um, 
so they will let you go and be able you'd be able to pull data out of a mainframe and nip and convert it to something else and then put it into something else or you'll be able to go and do multiple steps and reformat rework data um, in, in in various phases in in a, in a subsequent uh, set of steps and get your data in the form that you need so have a, have a look at those if you if you need to one of the things that you might want to be doing as you're doing either as part of your exploration or once you um, working out what your algorithms might be or doing uh, your modeling or whatever um, you might probably want to use some math libraries and there's a, a bunch of them around uh, Apache Commons maths is one of the older ones it's um, in the process of being reworked a little bit so there's uh, new uh, modules like I think there's a statistics module and other things that are getting sort of split out of the original core so if you if it looks like that project's been stagnating for a while it's there's probably other bits of it that are um, uh, in in good shape in smaller form somewhere else and then they'll rejig Commons math I believe once once that once that happens so have a look at that there's a bunch of other ones as well uh, Apache who I haven't looked at how with um, th that had slowed down for a while I haven't, I haven't checked recently as to um, what the commit history looks like I'll have to go back and do that and there's a bunch of other ones that do um, that let you get access to um, things like your GPU uh, cycles and so on I won't go into all the details that all of that you can get access to from Java some of it has been very fiddly in the past but it's uh, slowly getting better to be able to get access to uh, all those sorts of things so you can actually um, hook in and have very very fast uh, mathematic computations happening as part of your um, calculations and your models data if you're getting stuff in and out of databases whether they be relational databases or various you know um, other kind of uh, NoSQL databases there's lots of options for you Groovy's got enhancements on normal JDBC and there are really nice stuff uh, in the NoSQL space as well that, that ha give you if you like a, um, a a nice friendly DSL over and above what you might have you know in a graphing library or a um, your uh, document library document database sort of systems so there's a whole whole lot of things that make that really easy to do I won't go into all the details it's not, not important for us okay machine learning and, and data mining they're kind of um, a bit of overlap between those topics. Different pe some people mean slightly different things by the two terms, but I've just sort of munged them together here because often these libraries have a bit of both thrown in. So Weaker I told you about that had that GUI that you could use, but it's also a library that's very, very useful and we'll use that in one of our examples. Smile is, a, is a, um, another one that's um, quite popular and um, I haven't got that list. Maybe it's on the next slide. We'll see. There's, 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 a, there's a bunch of them that are there, and Spark has got a lot of stuff built in as well. And in fact, when we get to um, uh, Apache Ignite, it'll have some of its own stuff built into it as well. Every if I bump my mouse, the uh, the cursor goes outside the uh, the window, and then I, I scroll my mouse sc scroll thing, and nothing's happening. But uh, I'm not, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll persist and hopefully uh, keep going. Okay, neural networks. There's a bunch of libraries, Deep Learning for J and Cog. We'll look at um, some. We'll, we'll probably I'll probably only get to look at uh, Apache, uh, MX, Apache MXNet, which is in the incubator right now. So it's it's a very interesting project. But there's a bunch of um, other things coming down the pipeline that uh, are useful in that space for text processing so if you're wanting to do either searching there's Apache Lucene or uh, natural language processing there's there's a bunch of different libraries that are around and again there's some interesting stuff in the uh, the incubator in that space as well now I showed you a picture early on with Python and Scala and R and everything in it and um, you'd have to say that if you're looking for data science libraries, Python has 
much bigger selection of things to pick from. And there's a lot of investment that's still continuing in that space. So that Python is a good language for doing data processing in. But one area that's super, super strong in the JDK world is when you want to scale things up. So if you want to have a big cluster of, or a big, you know, compute farm, containers, uh, you know, containers of containers, farms of containers, doing all sorts of uh, computations for you in the cloud or whatever, there's some really, really uh, good stuff happening in the, in the JDK space. And a lot of those are Apache projects, whether they be uh, messaging or um, MapReduce or lay, we'll, 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 we'll see a bunch of those. Uh, we'll, we'll pick out a handful of those to go through just to give you a flavor for how, how those things work. Okay, so what are some of your options for scaling up? So there's a thing called Apache Ignite, which if you've ever heard of it, you'll probably have partitioned it away as, oh, that's some sort of cache thing, isn't it? Or some sort of clustered cache. Yes, it is, but it has um, machine learning libraries built into it these days. And that's, we're gonna, I'll show you how that uh, comes into play. So if you go and look at that, you'll see that it's got Python bindings, Java bindings, Scala bindings, thing. you might, after looking at their web page, you might think, oh, it doesn't support Groovy. I'll have to move on, find something else. But no, the, the Java bindings of that library is exactly what you want to use from Groovy. And uh, <coughs> that's what we use. So often you can, well, sometimes you can use the Scala library. Sometimes you can call out to R and Python and other things as well. I can show you some uh, code that uh, calls out to R and calls out to Python. Um, but uh, Java, if you if you've got any framework that's got a Java API, that's exactly what you want to be using with uh, with Groovy. And I'll show you using Ignite with Java. It's using its Java API with Groovy and using the machine learning libraries that are in there. And I'll, I'll talk about what that means. But it means you can scale things up to re to really really big uh, computations, and a very good uh, story for for doing that. Spark is the same thing. You might think, if you go look, again, you go look at its website, you think, oh, hey, it's nice, but it doesn't seem to support uh, Groovy. The whole, you can use the, the Scala API for some stuff. And in our example, use, there's some Scala stuff happening underneath the covers, but we're using the Java API. And that's what you want to do with Groovy. Go use the Java API. There might be some Scala stuff that's happening under the covers that you don't need to know about. You just call the Java API and all the rest will happen. In the Groovy ecosystem, there's a technology called Jeepers. So if it's for concurrency and parallelism. It's super, super simple to do things in, in, in parallel using this library. And so I can have what's known as data flow tasks, asynchronous tasks, parallel tasks, uh, actors, you know, all sorts of things end up being very, very simple to use using Jeepers. It, it um, needs to be a bit, uh, updated to include fibers and project loom and a bunch of other stuff um, these days but all the stuff that's there is still super super useful and it, i still uh, often use the bits and pieces out of it and we will get around uh, at some point to revamping it for um, some of the stuff that uh, is coming down the, the java jdk pipeline now uh, another apache project given that we're apache con I'm, i've got a, quite a few of the apache projects mentioned here um, Apache Beam is designed to act as, if you like, a, a, a common API above all of your other technologies. So there's a Beam mo uh, model that you can talk to. And then from uh, if, if, if you're supporting that mod uh, model, you can plug in different runtimes underneath it. So you can plug in uh, Spark if you want, or Samza if you want, or Flink if you want. You can plug different things under without having to recode. Re so you code to the Beam model, and it's sort of acting as a common denominator between all of your other uh, technologies there. And I'll show you that uh, how that runs. Okay. And again, you might think um, it uh, doesn't support Groovy, and you might, if you go look at the website, you might think, oh. Maybe Groovy fits under the other languages. Well, yes, it does, but it's it's actually the Java API that we're using. So um, just go and look at that, and that gives you everything you need to know. 
Okay, so I want to wrap up this uh, sort of general blurb. Um, but what I want to do is uh, just uh, pause for a moment. And um, a lot of people dive into data science and they are told that, oh, you know, we've got um, spam coming in uh, on our uh in our emails and we go use a whatever algorithm to work out how we can detect the spam and we want to get rid of it. And people often jump the gun and go and start using uh, a specific uh, technology. So we're going to talk about regression and classification. People will get to the point where, oh, I need to go use regression now. Um, and they won't even look at, they'll, they'll go use linear regression and it may not be a good fit. And they won't necessarily even broaden their mind and use other uh, other things than linear and in fact they might be should be using other things like uh, classification for the problem at hand be because of the particular parameters that they're trying to solve but i want to i want you to go even broader still and there's been huge amounts of research done in the whole computer science area for different kinds of algorithms and um, linear programming divide and conquer algorithms of various kinds graph and backtracking algorithms, all sorts of things, go broad when you're trying to solve problems. And by all means, come back to to what you need to do. But but uh, don't get boxed in trying to. If you if you've got a library and it only supports a small range of things and doesn't seem to be getting you where you need to go, broaden broaden what you want to go look at. And there's a whole range of stuff that's uh, out there. So do that. If it does happen to be in the data science space, again broaden to other things in the data science space so there's, there's a whole range of different things out there so maybe you want nonlinear uh regression instead of linear regression maybe you want you know uh you might there's a whole lot of things that you should be should be doing don't don't sort of get yourself bogged down there's all sorts of different kinds of classification and so on don't get yourself bogged down so keep that in mind um and having said that we're, we're going to dive in and i'm going to show you very specific things but I want you to think about what algorithm you should be using, not just because I tell you to go use this particular regression algorithm. Is it the best one? Okay, so there are lots of algorithms in that machine learning space, and there's just a small sample of them. That's not even uh, complete. You probably can't. You can probably barely read the uh, the font size there, uh, or the all of the different things that are listed there. Um, there's a whole bunch of things in here. There's neural networks. There's regression. There's clustering. Uh, deep learning, there's all sorts of things that are there. We're going to just look at a few snippets out of all of that space. And that's going to be the, the scope of what we do. We're just going to do a sample here, sample there, sample there, and that's all we'll get time to do. So when, when I'm showing you this stuff, you should be going and looking at other things that are um, are in this space. So to bro keep broadening your knowledge, that should, if you're in data science, you should be you should have a mental attitude of uh, continuous learning. And, and I encourage you to do that, even though we don't have time to, to go through a lot of this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pause now for, for five minutes. I'll take any questions either on chat or um, if you want to uh, do a video question, ask to join and I'll, I can put you on video and you can ask your question and we can have a chat. Um, if you need to go get a, get a cup of coffee or a drink of water or something, uh, now's a good time. I'll start back in a, in a few minutes' time. We're going to do regression. And how the rest of the time uh, is going to work is we're just going to do a particular topic. So I'm going to give you a few bit of slides on regression, and then we're going to dive in and we're going to look at the code and we're going to run those notebooks on regression. We'll do that for, the, for that, that whole topic, and then we'll go to the next topic, clustering and so on. Then we'll do some deep learning stuff. And we'll do that three or four times, and then our, our time will be up. Um, so that's the format. Okay, I'll break now for five minutes or a couple of minutes um, and ask away any questions in, in uh, chat or uh, um, ask to join if you want to do a video question. Everyone understanding everything so far? Not getting any uh, naysays, so I'm, I'm assuming everything's good. Okay, excellent. 
So just a reminder to anyone, if you're um, wanting to see the GitHub repo or the slides, if you missed the start of the talk, if you wander further up the uh, chat channel, you'll see some links to the agenda and it's, it tells you where all the, all the material is.